Hello everyone, my name is Craig Chamberlain with Precision Electric at precision-elect.com, your automation service center. Drives, motors, controls, we do it all. So if you need anything done, give us a call. Today we're gonna to be moving on with our videos on the Invertec variable frequency drive. We're gonna be doing a momentary push button stop start control. And we're gonna be controlling the speed with the speed potentiometer. And we are going to be disabling these front side uh, speed potentiometers and forward reverse switches because you can't do both at the same time. Now these switches are only on the NEMA 4X one, so if you have a standard IP20, you don't need to worry about that. So let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to start by removing the front cover. You just need to take a Phillips head screwdriver and rotate counterclockwise to loosen those screws. And I've already pre-wired this for our configuration, but in the previous video, we applied our incoming power, so I'm just going to go power it up. And to get started here, we're going to start with the programming. Now, the programming is going to match what is inside of our manual here, and there's really only three parameters we need to change. Parameter 12, which is our primary command source, is going to actually tell the drive where our start command is issued from. Now, we're not telling it yet if it's a selector switch or a uh, push button. We're going to do that at parameter 15. Just to get started, we're going to tell the drive, hey, for your start command, look at the terminal strip. That's this green strip down here. So to do that, we need to set P12 equal to zero. So I'm going to hold this middle button here, and it brings up P1. I'm going to use the up arrow keys to get up to P12. Select that middle button again, and it's already set to zero for mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the button again to select it. So now it's saved as the standard terminal strip control for the start command. Next, we're gonna bounce right over to analog input one format. Now this is for our speed control, and we also need to tell the drive to not use this speed pod on the face for the speed. We wanted to use these three wires down here, which is our separately wired analog speed potentiometer. To do that, we need to get to parameter 16. Now, your drive may get to 14 and then skip back to one. If that's the case, you have to unlock the advanced parameters. So you go to P14, press the menu button, and you have to set it equal to 201. Press the menu button again, and that will unlock parameter 15 and 16. 16 and on. So for the analog input, it's on P16. If I look at the manual here, that's analog input one format. If you have the NEMA 4X with the integrated speed potentiometer, it's going to be set to in dash pot, which is equivalent to the integrated potentiometer. So let me go ahead and go to that parameter. And right now I set it to the proper one, which is actually unidirectional, which means one direction zero to 10 volts. That's gonna tell it to look down here. By default, I'll go ahead and scroll up and show you what you would have seen. It says in pot, which means this integrated potentiometer. So I need to go down to that unidirectional zero to 10 volts. It means I'm gonna go in one direction, and it's gonna be a zero to 10 volt signal from my speed pot. Press the menu button again. That brings us to P16. And we're gonna go backward one parameter to P15 next. P15 is actually our application macro. That particular parameter is a little more confusing because as you can see, you've got a whole lot of macros to choose from. This is on page 42 of the manual. We discussed it in the previous video as well. Whatever you set P15 to on this left-hand column is gonna determine your wiring for your digital inputs. Now, after investigating this, for a momentary push button, which means once you press the button, the electrical signal will be allowed to flow from 24 volts to digital input one just for a moment, or for however long you press the button, you actually have to look for a pulse start. And that's on this little arrow here. It's got a little up arrow next to the start word. That's basically saying it's a momentary rising edge. So what we need to do is we need to either choose 10 or 11 for our start command. Now, since I'm gonna be controlling my speed with analog input one, this number 10 for 15 is what's gonna work out for me. But you can take a look at both of those and find what best fits your application. 
but in ours, we're gonna go ahead and use 10. So digital input one is gonna be our start, digital input two is gonna be our stop, digital input three is gonna let us choose our speed reference. In this case, we're just gonna leave it open and it's gonna to default to analog input one, which is what we wired these to. You'll see that here in a second. So let's go ahead and go to P15, select the menu again. I've already got it set to 10. You can scroll through these and that sets up my programming for the digital inputs. Now let's get to the wiring. If I go back two pages on my manual, or actually back one page, you'll see an electrical diagram of each of those macro settings. And we're gonna be looking at diagram five. Now you may be wondering, diagram five, but we chose 10. But on the right hand side of that column, for that macro, on the far right, you actually see which diagram it corresponds to. So diagram five has a normally open push button for input two and a normally closed for input three. So what I did is I've got my digital input two going into one side of my push button, digital input one, which is plus 24 volts, going into the other side of my start push button. And then the contacts on the back of that start push button are normally open. That means a voltage doesn't flow until I press the button down. Now I did the same thing here as on the print for digital input three. I have the voltage flowing from digital input one again, which is our plus 24 volts. I'm sorry, not digital input one, terminal one. And I have it going through the stop button. This time it's on the normally closed contacts of the stop button and coming back to three. That means when I press the stop button, it's actually gonna open up that contact. Now it's good to have a normally closed contact on a stop push button because a normally closed contact, if your button fails, will always stop the drive. So you want it to always have electricity there when the drive's running, and if for some reason it loses electricity on that connection, the drive will stop. Lastly, we can look at our analog input wiring here. Five is plus 10 volts on our speed pot. Six is our analog reference or analog input from the speed pot. And seven is our common on our speed pot. You'll probably need to look at the back of your speed pot to match those. These colors may not match exactly what yours is. But for mine, my plus 10 volts in my pot was red, my signal was white, and my common was black. So that's what I wired to those. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now we're just gonna go ahead and start it. So that's the great thing about macros, because macros make it so you only have to change one parameter to like do all of your programming. So we did that entire setup with only three parameters, which is pretty amazing. So let's go ahead and go to our start push button here. Notice nothing happens. It's because we didn't program it for the keypad. We actually programmed it for this external start. So here's my start. If I step, press on it, you notice it starts. Now this is just a momentary signal. So it doesn't maintain a contact, doesn't pull in a relay, doesn't close a switch. It's just a pulse and that started the drive. Now. I've got my analog input wired here. So if I turn this up, you'll see the speed rise. I can go all the way up to full speed or I can turn it down. Next, I can do a pulse stop. So if I just press this, it issues a stop command. And that also is just a pulse. So there's no relays needed or anything, which is kind of nice, no extra hardware. That's all there is to it. Thank you for stopping by and watching this video. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to call us. Remember, we are Precision Electric at precision-elect.com, your automation service center, drives, motors, controls. We do new sales and repair. Um, and again, we sell these drives, they're great drives, and we'll send you a quote. And if you have any questions, we'll answer them. Thanks for stopping by.